Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this nice little math word problem. And the first step to solving any problem in mathematics is to read the problem. So let's go ahead and do that right now. It says, how many outfits can you make with two shirts, three pants, and three, or two shoes, excuse me. So we have two shirts, three pants, and two shoes. How many outfits can we make? Well, uh, if you think you could figure this thing out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna probably guess that most of you are gonna get this correct, okay? So you're gonna look at this, and you're like, oh, we have two shirts, three pants, two shoes. Uh, I think it's this many. And you're gonna put in an answer, and I think most of you are probably gonna get this right. But here's the deal, even if you get this correct, I want you to think about how can you validate or back up your conclusions, okay? If, if you get the right answer, that's fine, but how do you know for sure you did this correctly, okay? This particular problem um, actually involves a concept called counting. This is a counting problem. And you might be saying to yourself, counting, what are you talking about, like one, two, three? Yes, right, so if I told you or asked you how many stars do we have right here? You would count these stars up, right? One, two, three. But here, if you notice in this particular question, we're asking how many outfits? We're trying to count something here, right? We're trying to count how many different combinations of outfits can we make with two shirts, three pants, and two shoes. This is a very, very important topic in mathematics, especially more advanced math. So we're gonna be talking about some things here that you may or may not know, but you certainly need to know, especially if you are studying mathematics, oh, I would say at the pre-algebra level and beyond. So we're gonna get into all this interesting stuff in just one second, but first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love helping students learn mathematics. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. Here's the three things you need, okay? If you don't have these three things, you're gonna have a tough time being successful in math. So the first thing you need is a strong work ethic. You gotta be willing to work hard. There are no shortcuts in math. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'll be the first to tell you. If I need the shortcuts, I would share them with you, okay? Uh, you have to work hard. There's just too much stuff to learn in mathematics. So if you're like, nah, I'm looking for easy ways to learn math, just stop looking, start putting in effort to learn the subject, and you're gonna do very, very well. The second thing you need is encouragement. And this is especially important for those of you that struggle in math. You need to kind of have some kind of hope that if you do work hard, you're actually gonna be successful, right? And this is where a lot of frustration comes into math. A lot of you are working hard and you're still not you know, getting good results. And that's because you don't have this third thing. And that is great math instruction. Whoever you're learning from or whatever you're learning from, you know, if it's not clear and understandable, then you're gonna get frustrated. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting in the class for let's say an hour and then being like completely clueless of what was uh, just said. You see, math is a very technical subject. I could teach math in a very technical way. I could sound like a textbook, but guess what? That's not gonna help anyone out, okay? The way I like to teach math is I like to explain things in a way that all students can understand without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that, you, uh, that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Great note taking is an absolute must, uh, must know skill in order to be successful in math. So you gotta work hard at um, taking notes every day. It will help you uh, stay focused. But uh, if your notes are so-so right now, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so we're talking about counting, and uh, you know, in this particular problem, you know, we're dealing with some pretty easy numbers to work with, but I could certainly make this a much more challenging problem, but I, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to introduce some concepts about counting that you're gonna need to know as you progress in mathematics. But let's go ahead and give you the answer to the problem. You can make 12 outfits, okay? 
So some of you are out there are probably saying to yourself, all right, we got two, three, and two. Maybe if I go two times three times two, that's 12. So probably most of you did this, and that's good. Okay, so you got the right answer. That's excellent. Maybe some of you went in the two plus three uh, plus two, which, of course, would be five. Um, uh, three plus two is five. Plus two is seven. So, hey, at least you tried something, and you just didn't, you know, put a question mark into the comment section. But this is the correct answer. Okay, now probably, again, a lot of you out there got this answer correct. But, uh, but the whole point to this is, why is this correct? And how do you know, in fact, you are um, correct, right? Like, you know, like, yeah, it's 12 outfits, but, well, can we check this? You know, do we know for sure? Well, here's the deal, right? So anytime you have a math word prom, you want to read the prom, reread the prom, and then really make sure you understand the prom. Read it again. And again, we're trying to count something up here. How many outfits we're counting uh, up these combinations of outfits that we can make with two shirts, three pants, and two shoes. So in uh, any math word prom, what you want to try to do is model the situation. You can use kind of little simple examples and whatnot. So I'm going to kind of model things up this way. So we have three pants. So let's say our pants are jeans, slacks, and dress pants. And then we have two shirts. Maybe we have long sleeve shirt, short sleeve shirts, and then we have shoes, uh, maybe like dress shoes and sneakers, right? So we're trying to figure out, all right, well, how many outfits can I make? I got to select some pants. I got to select, uh, you know, one pair of pants, a, a shirt, and a uh, uh, shoe, right? That would give me one outfit. So maybe I could have jeans, a long sleeve shirt, and uh, dress shoes. That is one outfit. Okay, so you can see here, you can kind of start counting these things up. So if you took a common sense approach by like, you know, trying to, you know, map things out this way and just count things, count things up, that's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and talk about the two approaches that you could solve this problem with. Okay, so when you're dealing with counting problems, in general, there's two ways you can solve them, okay? And the first is to actually count things up, just as I was kind of do, doing right here, right? I'm going to actually lay out, you know, some pants here, some shirts, and some shoes, and I'm just going to start constructing outfits and counting them up. But uh, when you count, okay, like in a visual way, we actually can construct something called a tree diagram, and it's a nice visual format to count things up. I'm going to show you this in just one second. Now, the second thing we could do is use some mathematical principles. And the one that I want uh, to uh, introduce you to is the fundamental counting principle. OK, so both of these are important. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, let's talk about a tree diagram. So you're saying tree. Are we talking like a tree like this with branches and stuff? Yeah, that's basically the idea. So here's our pants, shirts and shoes. This is what a uh, tree diagram uh, looks like, okay? We're gonna start with um, pants, okay? And we're gonna build out kind of like a trunk and trees, and you'll see exactly, it's probably easier just to show you this, um, you know, uh, basically, you know, I think a, a picture is worth a thousand words. It's probably easier, again, to explain this by just actually showing you what's going on here. So let's talk about jeans, right? Let's say we say, all right, I'm going to take jeans as my pants. I have one pair of pants here. So what are the different possible combinations if I only have these jeans? Well, you could um, pick a long or short sleeve shirt. Okay, and you can see here I'm building out this tree. Okay, so if I pick a long sleeve shirt, then I can have uh, dress shoes, right, for example. So this is one outfit right there. I can have jeans, long sleeve, and dress shoes, or I can have jeans, long sleeve, and sneakers. This is one outfit. So we have a different outfit, right? But I have the jeans, long sleeve, sneakers, and dress pants. So that's two. But what if I had the jeans, short uh, sleeve shirt, okay, and dress shoes? So now I have another different outfit. And then I can have the short sleeve shirt with the sneakers, of course, with just jeans right here. And that's another unique outfit. So all together, I have four. OK, so uh, building out a tree diagram is just a nice, easy way to kind of construct, you know, how many different combinations you can get. All right. So this is where we had jeans as our pants. Well, let's do the same thing if we switch out with slacks, right, because we have three uh, uh, pants we can choose from. So we just discovered 
or just count it up using this tree diagram that we can have four outfits using their jeans. And you're going to see here in a second that I'm going to have four outfits using the slacks and four outfits using dress pants. So you can just see that work right there. So here's the tree diagram again. And by the way, too, if you are studying some sort of basic, um, uh, you know, some sort of math course, it could be like in a pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, basic probability course, you're going to have to, you know, construct tree diagrams. I'm probably pretty sure that uh, most of you out there will run it, run into this. So if you've never seen this again, you probably will see this in your future. So here again, here's the slacks. You can make the same different combinations. Again, one, we'll end up with uh, one, two, three, four different outfits. And then again, we'll end up with our dress uh, pants. And then same thing here, we'll have four outfits when we have our dress pants and all these various combinations. So four, four, and four is 12. So 12 outfits total, okay? All right, so that's counting using a tree diagram. It's just a way to organize a, um, all the different things that we're trying to count. All right, now let's talk about this other way to count, and that's using the fundamental counting principle. So here it is. It's basically an abbreviated um, uh, definition of it, but let me go ahead and read it to you. It says, if one event can occur in M ways, okay, so if one event can occur in M ways, and another event can occur in N ways, then the number of ways that both events can occur is equal to M times N. So again, this is very kind of technical in its description, but basically this is what it means. Let me go ahead and show you an example more of the application of the fundamental counting principle. And of course, we use the fundamental counting principle when we're trying to count things up. All right, so we have three events here, okay? We need to look at pants, shirts, and shoes as three separate events. Event one is you going to your closet and grabbing one pair of pants, okay? And of course, you only have three hanging there uh, in your closet. So that's our first event. Now, how many uh, different ways can that event happen? If you were to say, of course, you know, we're assuming that you're only going to be wearing one pair of pants at a time. So the number of ways that event can happen is three ways. Okay. All right. How about our shirts? Well, same thing here. This is our second event. So after you grabbed your pants, let's suppose you went to go get your shirt. You can only grab a short or long sleeve shirt. That event can happen only in two ways, right? And then shoes, you go grab your shoes. You can either grab your dress shoes or your sneakers. And again, that separate event can happen in two ways. So we have three events. One can happen three ways. This can happen two ways. And this can happen two, uh, two ways. Let's go back up to the definition that I'm going to show you the answer. So if one event can happen, okay, this let's think about our uh, selection of our pants. It can happen in three ways. And another event uh, can occur in N ways. Maybe this other event is the selection of our shirt. That can happen in two ways. Then the number of ways that both events can happen is equal to, we multiply these numbers together, M times N. Now, you might be saying, well, there's only two events. Well, this can go on for as many events as possible. If you have another event, we just um, continue to multiply however many events we have, okay? So when we do this, we have three events, three unique events, a selection of our pants, shirts, and shoes. We know how many different ways. So the number of ways all these events can happen is going to be three times two times two, okay? Which, of course, is 12. All right, so that's a quick introduction to the fundamental uh, counting principle. And counting really comes into play when you're studying things like probability and statistics and whatnot. Counting is a big, big deal. Okay, you might be thinking to yourself, counting, I already know how to count. That's one, two, three. Well, listen, that's very, very good as well. But, you know, we can have all sorts of different uh, interesting and more challenging counting problems. So hopefully uh, you got something out of this video. If you need more help with this uh, uh, topic of counting and counting principle, maybe permutations and combinations, uh, basic probabilities and uh, statistics, I teach this in my various uh, math courses. So I teach this on a very basic level and pre-algebra, of course, algebra one is a little bit more advanced, algebra two, even more advanced. So you can take a look at those respective courses uh, if you want to learn more about this particular topic. 
Okay, so hopefully this little video was interesting. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.